How's it going everyone? I made a video going over my strength stacking bone shattered juggernaut that was very well received. And because of this I thought I'd make a follow up video going more in depth about the build and how it really felt and functioned. First let's just talk about how the build works. This is a strength stacking build using the item the pillar of the caged god. This weapon gets 16% increased physical weapon damage per 10 strength that you have. So the more strength the better. Our current setup is sitting at around 1331 strength. This is pretty good and requires a decent amount of investment to get to. But honestly, outside of a few items, I'd say you're only going to end up spending a few X. That is if you buy some of the base items and then craft them into usable pieces for yourself. Now 1331 strength is pretty good, but there are other people with similar builds that have got 1500 or up to 1700 strength with their setups. But to be completely honest with you, I don't think two to 300 more strength is going to make or break this build. Even if you go completely out of your way to try to get 1700 strength, I really don't think you're going to be pulling that much more DPS, at least not for the amount of investment that that would require. So let's talk about my biggest problems that I had with this build. For me, it was the inconsistency on how it felt when clearing maps especially maps with the large outdoor areas. The clear doesn't feel all that bad in closed in maps, but it's still pretty inconsistent. This is a problem that I tried to address a number of ways. One way was trying to use Ruthless, which if you don't know, Ruthless attacks have a base stun duration of 0.8 seconds. And this is important because Bone Shatter's AOE scales off of the stun duration on an enemy. And sometimes if you're not using Ruthless, you'll go into situations, at least with this particular setup, where you don't actually stun anything and your clear is terrible because of it. But even with Ruthless in the build, it still felt pretty inconsistent. So then I tried specking into Unyielding. Unyielding gives you 8% increased damage and 6% increased area of effect per endurance charge. You also get 10% increased stun duration on enemies per endurance charge as well. But even with this and with Ruthless, the clear still felt weird. Sometimes you jump into a pack of mobs, smack them, and most of them would blow up, but then there might be two or three on the edge that don't die. And this causes some weird gameplay where you're jumping around trying to get the stragglers or you could just choose to ignore them and have problems just clearing the map. And there are even more frustrating things that are unavoidable, like monsters with the unwavering mod. Now with most annoying mods and maps, you can just re-roll the map. But some magic monsters will actually spawn with the unwavering mod on them which means they cannot be stunned. Sure, this is a minor inconvenience, but it's still an inconvenience, and with already inconsistent clear, it can be pretty frustrating. I also wanna talk about how squishy the build can feel at times. Even though I'm playing a Juggernaut with a little over 20K armor or so, and around seven endurance charges, I was running into a lot of scenarios where my character would just get one shot or his health was just bouncing all over the place. This could partially be because I'm doing a low life setup with petrified blood though. So because of this, I stopped using unyielding and went for unrelenting instead, because this gives you more physical damage reduction and you get reduced elemental damage taken while at maximum endurance charges. The additional chaos resistance per endurance charge is a definite plus as well. But even with this, I still felt like I wasn't as tanky as I should be because my fire resistance is at 78%, my cold is at 77, and my lightning res is at 78% as well. With my flasks up, I have 27k armor, and I also have petrified blood to help deal with spiky damage. But even still, I didn't feel all that tanky. And lastly, I want to talk a little bit about the single target damage. The single target damage is mediocre at best. And that's because you have to utilize your totems to get any significant amount of damage going anyway. So you're constantly having to cycle between both of your totems, your Ancestral Warchief and your Ancestral Protector, just to keep up a decent amount of damage. And if you've played any strike skill in the past, then you know that staying on top of the boss or any enemy to deal damage consistently is already frustrating enough. So having to worry about your totems and staying within strike range is just kind of frustrating and it makes it hard to uh, keep up your single target DPS. That being said, I've definitely played worse builds, but it's really not that great either. Okay, let's briefly go over my passive tree. So in this build, I'm utilizing one split personality that gives me plus five strength and plus 40 armor. And for those of you who don't know, this jewel socket gets 25% increased effect per allocated passive skill between it and your class starting location. This means it benefits from you traveling through lots of nodes just to get to that node up here for more strength. 
Because of this, I opted to go down through the tree over here and get a bunch of two-handed nodes and down through the life nodes and up over here. Obviously, if you really wanted to, you could probably make better use of this jewel by traveling over here and around and up over here or something. I've seen a couple different setups do that and they seem to get quite a bit of strength. I don't know if it's specifically from these jewels, but they do seem to help, especially if you utilize more than one. I know for me, they kind of seem a little lackluster because even though I went out of my way to travel all the way down here and travel around up to here to put my jewel here, I only really gained around like 50 to 60 strength from doing so. Now, is that worth all the passive point investment? I'm not sure. That's something that you could sit there and min-max for fucking hours if you really wanted to. But I figured it was worth it, so I just left it in. Um, a couple other things here worth mentioning. The attribute mastery. So when you first go to the attribute masteries, you might think 5% increased attributes is the one to go for. But actually, you get significantly more strength just going for the flat increase of 5 strength per allocated mastery passive skill. And lastly, I just want to talk about the location of this lethal pride jewel. Because of my pathing here and all these extra nodes that I grab in this area, this lethal pride jewel gets a lot of value. I obviously can't show you in POB what this is giving, but you can get quite a lot of useful stats with the lethal pride jewel in this build. Everything else is pretty generic. I just try to grab some crit, crit multi, life, and then I have the impale nodes here as well. Okay, on to the gear now. So obviously we already talked about the pillar of the caged god, so there's that. But one thing I want to talk about specifically about mine is it has the corrupted implicit of 29% increased area of effect. So when I was trying out all the things that I was talking about before, like trying to increase my AoE and trying to get better clear, I was using this staff during that time. And even still, I felt like I was struggling with my clear. For my helmet, I'm using the Abyssus. And this is because without this, my damage actually felt pretty awful. I'm usually not a fan of any build that utilizes the Abyssus because I feel like it's a crutch for bad builds. And to be completely honest, I don't really feel like this situation is any different. Either way, you could try your build without it, but uh, you might need significantly more strength to get damage. Next, for my chest piece, I'm using the Iron Fortress, which is a pretty standard issue strength stacking chest piece for something like this. And that's because not only does it give you a lot of flat strength, but the strength's damage bonus instead grants 3% increased melee physical damage per 10 strength instead of 2. So this can add up to quite a bit of damage. It could be possible that a rare crafted chest ends up netting you more damage in the long run though. My gloves and boots are just for life and resistances, but you need to also roll a good strength roll on there too, which could make this more expensive. For my amulet, I'm just using an Astramentus, which actually nets you quite a bit of strength and ends up being much better than most rare amulets you could possibly get. For my rings, once again, just strength, life, resists. And for my curse or mark, it's Assassin's Mark. Your belt is a very important item. You want to get a synthesized belt with 18% increased strength as your implicit. I think by default this is 15%, but after you put catalysts on it, it becomes 18%. I got really lucky, I think, on my first craft with this. I got uh, a bunch of life, really good resist, and then I just crafted flat strength on it. Usually the base belt for this is around 2x, or at least it was when I bought it. Um, I think this one now, if you wanted to buy something just like this, it would probably be worth somewhere around 6 to 7x, maybe even more. For my rare jewels, they're just crit multi and max life. And the Watcher's Eye that I'm using gives me two extra impales while using Pride. I'm sure there's quite a lot you could do here for the gear to min-max this character, but that's probably not something that I'm going to do. Okay, on to the skills now. This build utilizes Precision, Dread Banner, and Blood and Sand, all linked to Arrogance to reserve your life. And then for the totem setup, I'm using Ancestral Protector with Maim, Multiple Totems, and Vol Ancestral Warchief. As for my other auras, I'm using Pride, Determination, Petrified Blood, and they're all linked to Enlighten. Then we have your typical Leap Slam with Life Tap, Blood Rage, and then Enduring Cry is on your left click. Then we have Immortal Call linked to cast when damage taken. And for our primary skill, we have Bone Shatter linked to Multi Strike, Impale, Melee Physical Damage, Brutality, and Bloodthirst. I'm not entirely sure Bloodthirst nets you the most damage here. You might be better off just going for Ruthless instead of Bloodthirst. That way you get help with your clear and the damage might be a little bit better as well. And as I said before, you could replace Impale for Ruthless, but then that would require you to move your tree around and probably get Impale chance on your gear. And being that you already need to get good stats and strength on your gear, it's going to make it much harder to roll something like Impale chance too. So all in all, this build felt okay, but I'd most likely never play it again. 
I don't really mean the bone shatter skill itself, but just this particular setup with the skill. This setup doesn't really allow you to get a lot of trauma stacks because your attack speed isn't all that great. And I feel like that's kind of a big downside because you get a lot of damage from stacking more trauma. Also, attribute stacking builds are notoriously expensive, and honestly for this build, I don't think you're really getting what you're putting into it. It can be expensive, and it's really just not that good. No matter what I did, the clear was just inconsistent, and the single target damage was mediocre at best. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of comments of people saying, well, you should have built it like this, or you should have done it like that. And I'm sure there are lots of ways you could build this, but I really don't think you're going to get a ton more damage out of this build. Currently, I might be sitting at somewhere around 2 million DPS, and probably more if I move my gems around and got some uh, alternate quality ones and maybe some awakened ones. But the thing is, even with the most optimized setup, you're probably only looking at the very top end of like, 4 million DPS, and that's going to be with your totems up, so that won't even consistently be 4 million DPS. So you'd have to ask yourself, is it worth the investment to you? I don't know, it might be. I know to me, it's not. So if I were to revisit Bone Shatter in the future, I definitely wouldn't go about it this way. But you can let me know in the comments what you guys think. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe for more Path of Exile content.